everybody. My name is Lelania Dubois and I am the creator of Humboldt Grace and one of the co-founders of the Humboldt Grace community. Thank you for joining us. Humboldt Grace, it's a name that someone I very much love and admired created for me. He believed our community was so strong and resilient through the drug war. Um, he saw what we had been through and felt that the way we maneuvered and focusing on sustainability and feeding ourselves and building the schools in our communities was an incredibly graceful way to navigate the drug war. Welcome everyone, welcome to the community and those of you joining the Humboldt Grace community for the first time, thanks for joining us. My name is Lelania Dubois, I am the creator of Humboldt Grace and one of the four co-founders of the Humboldt Grace community. I'm also your moderator for the day. Co-founder Sam De La Paz is running the show in the back while co-founder Adelia Carrillo is moderating the questions in the community as they come in. This production has been a team effort, so please give the team big hearts where you can and say thanks. It wouldn't have happened without them. Today we're having, we're gonna have a question and answer session in the last hour from two to three. If you're not already, make sure you join the Facebook community called Humboldt Grace, a cannabis community gathering place and are viewing from there. That is where Julia is taking questions and fielding them for us so we can engage with them as a panel. Uh, we're launching this production during a time where we're being incredibly challenged to explore the darkest parts of ourselves. We have been forced to be alone with ourselves in a way that modern society has never seen. Veils surrounding centuries of injustices are being ripped off. We're starting to rise up together globally to do the right thing. It is time for our cannabis industry to do the same. Humble and our outlying cannabis communities in the Emerald Triangle have a very deep his history of rising up against injustices through vision, through strategy, and by building strong community. The Emerald Triangle regions are filled with generations of cannabis farmers who built strong communities under oppressive environments. We protect ourselves, we protected ourselves, we shut out the outside world, excluding ourselves from mainstream. Today, we have asked the outside world to sit down with us in hopes we can begin to heal some of the damages the drug war created and together find better solutions. We can see some of the issues around cannabis industry now, such as systemic racism and racial ignorance in our cannabis communities. Our brothers and sisters of color have had to pay the same prices, yet have lost so much more. Why are they not at the table with us today? Back in the day, our community's glue was the midwives and the homemakers. Why are women in our industry being undervalued? Patients are being left out when it is the patient that sacrificed for, the, for 215 in California in the first place. It is the patient that dies for us. In California, medical business was thriving and now our black market is. How do we fix it? Then the legacy farmers, the ones with decades of intentionally built spoils, closets filled with hidden strains, and generations of experience around the cannabis plant, the communities that were subjected to helicopters, raids, and families broken apart are now devastated by legalization. Today, we are here to discuss how we, legacy cannabis and corporate cannabis together can help ensure true social equity as a major part of federal policies. 
we do not have, we're here to share and communicate based on the values of love and grace. Thank you for joining us in this mission. to welcome our panel. On the legacy side, you'll see Kristen Nevidal, Chair of the International Cannabis Farmers Association, Lizandro Salazar, CEO of Arcata X, and we're still waiting. Oh, and we do have Casey O'Neill, co-founder of Happy Day Farms. On the industry side, we have AC Braddock, CEO of Eden Labs, Michael Brosgart, COO of Advanced Vapor Devices, and John A. McKay of Synergistic Technologies and Associates. Thank you everyone for joining us. Good day. So, you know, we brought everyone here today, as you can see from, from hearing these interviews, we have um, a unique, diverse group here to, to discuss. And we really wanted to show that through the diversity, we all really come to this plant. And even if we don't come to it, we end up learning from this plant and it changes us. And we believe that that shift can help change, not just our industry, but you know, a lot of people in cannabis believe that this plant can change the world. Um, but in order to do that, we first have to see where we're alike so we can we can have real discussion michael you are the first on my screen um you know you you mentioned how you how you grew up in berkeley and you've been around the plant for a long time but as an industry you really just started engaging what have you learned since that engagement you know what what have been some of the major lessons for you that she's taught you I can't hear you. You're on mute, Michael. Sorry, I said I said be patient. No, I was in all, <laughs> all, all, all jokes aside. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a uh, it's a tough question because it's it's cannabis has taught me so much. I think throughout my my ent entire life, um, I, you know, I was a uh, probably a too early adopter of it. Um, you know in my life now that I look back and I have kids and I'm like, oh, I would you know, never want my 11 year old kid to be smoking <laughs> cannabis. But, you know, to each, you know, you know it, is, it is what it is, right? And, and, and you know, we all, we all have our, our own experiences. Um, so throughout different stages of my life, it's taught me, you know, it's taught me many different things. I think primarily it's been a uniter um, for me. It's, it's always brought me together with people from all different backgrounds. I think that's one of the cool things about cannabis is like, you know, you don't have to have commonalities with someone other than the fact that you both like to smoke a joint. And I think that, you know, simple fact has just connected me and, and, and started so many cool conversations and put me in, in, in touch with people I never probably would have had conversations with. And I think it's so different from other, um, uh, you know, I don't want to word, use the word intoxicants, but, you know, alcohol and other type of opioids that people use, I think it has, you know, can have the, the opposite effect. So, you know, for me, it's it's um, it's taught me a lot. I think as I come into now, you know, being a professional in the cannabis industry, it's interesting because you have these two sides and you have the more traditional side, which I think still operates out of this kind of mentality of fear and secrecy. Um, and then you have a new side of the industry coming in that's, you know, trying to put their MBA all over it and, and you know, use KPIs and metrics and, I think how those two things are, are coming together is is just really interesting, and um, um, you know I think I think a lot of the newcomers are just opportunistic people, um, but a lot of them are really awesome people who who have come to admire and and respect and love the plant, um, and I think that's super special because you know what I find now is like it's always for me it's it's always been more of a I think a recreational and kind of an, an anxiety killer for me. So, but for a lot of people, you know, I hear these incredible stories. Like 
I worked at ArcView for a couple of years and, and, you know, I spoke to investors all over the world and like this one common thread, I spoke to people that you would never think would be cannabis supporters. I mean, talking about right wing people in the Midwest and, you know, they, they've experienced how beneficial cannabis can be for, you know, a parent who has an ailment or a child who's battling cancer. And it's like people, once they are able to engage with it and react with it and, and understand the benefits of it, they really come to love it. And I think that's, you know, part of how it unites people. So, you know, just, you know, I think it's, it's, it's always been something that brought people together and it can, and it continues to be, and it's, it's such a, powerful plant that we've only scratched the, I think the tip of the iceberg on what it can do. So I'm just really excited to, to see kind of as the industry um, unfolds. And I think as legalization kind of sweeps across the country and the rest of the world, kind of what all this ingenuity and, and innovation will, will bring and, you know, how it will potentially now get integrated into um, a more of a, of a, you know, truly medicinal way. And, you know, how will some of the cannabinoids be maybe, be, a, you know, an ingredient now in a Tylenol-like substance. I mean, who knows? I think there's so much opportunity out there um, to use plant-based uh, medicine. I think this is what it's teaching people. I mean, plant-based medicine has been around forever, but I think, you know, now, you know, the Western world is waking up and saying, wow, it is way more beneficial and powerful to use a plant-based medicine to, to, than to use a synthetic type of medicine. So, um, yeah, it's taught me to be patient. It's taught me to, 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 um, uh, you know, respect everybody to be chill, to, to just to, you know, to, to come together. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to what the next, what the next wave of, of cannabis is and, and to see what, you know, this great, you know, these great minds who are working in it, what, what people will be able to do. Thank you. Yeah, I, I believe it's a uniter too, you know, um, and, and we are in fear right now, but that's why we're here is so we can move through that fear. So Lizandro, you are next on my screen. What has this plant taught you? So this is a great question, actually. I hadn't really thought about it. And then, and it actually goes pretty darn deep for me personally. And, and honestly, I, I see her now more as not just a plant, right, but potentially a spirit of something bigger, uh, it being psychoactive and so on. It's, it's one of the master plants, right? So it's also been called the healing of the nation uh, throughout old, you know, reggae music. And, and it's, it's kind of proving to be that. Now, for me personally, on my own path, I'll kind of start from the beginning, um, having been a cultivator uh, and starting with the seeds. To me, uh, this is the time to be really gentle. This is where you have to be attentive. This is where you have to have faith that what you're putting your energy into is going to have some, some, something at the very end of the road. And that road could be months long. So, you know, just that initial, that initial love for what you're doing and, and putting that into it. Now, now once the plant's growing, um, knowing that it's a living thing and you have to nurture it every single day and not only nurture it but just be patient it's not just going to give you what you want and and so that is is just a lesson i think in 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 uh in just letting things unfold in their natural you know time uh in the in the natural season um now when it comes to taking care of the plant and pruning the plant removing you know energy that might be distracting and then using that pruning process to then focus what you want the energy you want to you know some some final goal so that whole kind of pruning process and really just getting focused on what you want to what you want to do i think is 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 something that i've i've seen with the plant um and then of course when you know the the blooming phase and knowing that you know when something's blooming it actually needs support you, the plant will fall down if you don't support it while it's blooming and so knowing that when when each of us are blooming we need to have teams around us and, and su support around us to kind of help that, you know, that, that thing kind of get as big and as amazing as it can be. And then of course, you know, the harvest, which is, which is just su such a humble process because you're now, re you're taking the life from this plant and it's basically just giving something to you. And it's not only giving it to you, but it's, it's giving it to, to you and the next person that uses it and all of the other people downstream. So it's just incredible to see how abundant the earth is and this plant is and the air is and the water is 
at all at that moment when you're doing the harvest. I think that that's extremely just gratifying and also humbling at the same time. Um, and then, of course, you know, during during the, the, the process where there's problems and just knowing that nothing's certain, things are always changing. There's always going to be that un that thing that you didn't predict and just knowing and just rolling with the punches, you know, and doing the best you can in the moment. Um, of course, moving into once it's harvested and when you're trying to, like, cure this thing and knowing that you have to have an environment around it to really protect the value that's there. So just knowing in our own lives, we need to set the environment around us to really, really succeed in the long run. Um, and then, of course, in the processing, just having, you know, knowing that, you know, there's a lot of work to do, but just slow and steady wins the race. One snip at a time, right? Like we always used to say at the table, you know, just keep your fingers moving, keep it positive, and, and just you'll, you'll get through it at the end. And, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours at that in that chair will teach you that that aspect of uh, just, you know, slow and steady, right? And then of course, you know, when it comes to the sales of this plant, gosh, I mean, these are where the biggest lessons I think are learned for a lot of us. Uh, you know, it's, it's trust is huge, right? Like don't take risks that you're not willing to have not go your way. So just really being aware of integrity, the people you're working with, and then knowing your value, right? Not not necessarily needing to sell everything all at once for some price that might not make sense to you. So knowing your value and being really firm in that um, and, and, and being able to communicate that I think is extremely important. Um, and then of course, uh, consuming it, <laughs> which is a, a huge lesson to me almost every time I do consume it because I never know what to expect anymore just knowing that there's always these subconscious things that might bubble up. It's always a work that you're doing with yourself. And, you know, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's easy, but you're always going to keep learning more with, with her. And so those are some of the, the takeaways really that I've gotten just, you know, really in a nutshell, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a beautiful metaphor, really. That was beautiful. That was so valuable. That was Thank you for sharing it like that with us. I, I really appreciated that. I can see you going, yeah, brother. Yeah, Dude, brother. <laughs> that was real. Like, you know, and, and breaking it down into the pieces like that was phenomenal. Effort, Thank you. Like, I, I definitely like that was like a little emotional. I really appreciated that. Um, and, you know, to sort of, I, I guess, kind of to build upon, you know, for me, I, I think, and, and for so many people, um, you know, from the homesteaders to, you know, to folks in, in my generation and younger, like I've seen cannabis and for me, you know, be the sort of the portal back to farming, back to the land, back to the earth. And, and um, that, I, you know, I think when I was when I was younger, I used to I used to kind of envy um, folks who had faith, whether it was, you know, religious faith or, you know, pick up, you know, your, your definition of it. Um, and it really wasn't until I, I became a farmer and kind of went through the various processes, you know, um, you know, when you get into cannabis, if you're if you're really thinking about kind of like sort of the darker aspects of it, there's, you know, there's kind of two bad things that can happen. You can get robbed or you can go to jail um, and you kind of wonder, like, 
what am I, you know, how would I react if? Um, and having been through both of those situations and, and having come out of them and felt like, okay, you know, I, I, I suppose, you know, I've, I've tested my mettle. Um, and, and again, same thing with farming, like farming is going to knock you down and kick the shit out of you. And um, are you going to get back up? And so it's, it's been this, this process, you know, in, in which I feel like the, the, the plant has always been there for me and, and has always had the lessons. And, and I really echo what you said, Lozandro, in terms of like, like there was a time where it was just, it was just habit from the moment I woke up in the day all the way through. And there wasn't really a, a, a reflexiveness about it. And so now my relationship with it has changed a lot where it's, it's exactly what you said. We're like, I'm not sure what I'm going to get. And there's, you know, like there's, you know, it's the old like, there's the the both sides of the coin, the good part, and then like the dark night of the soul, hard work part, and like both of those are necessary and important. Um, and so sometimes it's this really like uplifting flying on a cloud, and sometimes it's just like, oh, I got some shit to work on. Um, and then the the final thing I, I've been thinking a lot about um, is this idea that like cannabis is now teaching us civics lessons. Like I'm yeah. working on ordinances and you know, thinking about initiatives and we're going to the board of supervisors and we're working on legislation and all these things that were, that were never part of the con, you know, 10 years ago, if you just said, this is what you're going to be working on in 10 years ago. Yeah. Right. Um, and so to just see that, that it provides that opportunity for growth. Um, and I think is leading us, you know, I think I've seen that it come full circle. Like my folks are old school back to the landers. And so to go, you know, from, from, you know, kind of fuck the system, it's broken. We're out. To all the way back around to like, well, actually, you know, the old political saying, like, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Like, if we're not participatory, if we're not making our voices heard, uh, it's going to happen without us. And so to see that come full circle has been, you know, a, a tremendously powerful thing. And, and so um, overall, just, you know, so much, so many lessons, so much support and and um, so many teachings. It's I, I agree, you know, the, the, the master plan idea, like it's, it's so powerful. And. I think that that cycle of good energy, you know, and that's something we really try to focus on from, you know, what we ended up with, you know, we're, we're happy day farms. Grandpa always said, let us be happy in our work and, and trying to put that love and good energy into the food, um, into the medicine and, and knowing that this is going out into the world to, to be that support that, you know, head change that process for people is a is you know I, I call it the farmer's contract. Like to provide nourishment and medicine to people is is a is a you know a deep and powerful thing, and it, it's um, it it all kind of to me adds up to this this sort of uh, ministry or calling that I that I you know feel su just such a deep gratitude for. Yeah, I, I feel that ministry, that calling for sure. I, I believe she's a communicator of earth wisdom, plant wisdom. She's helping us communicate those wisdoms. AC, can you hear me? <clears throat> no. John, can you hear me? Kristen. Oh, um, I can hear you now. I'm sorry. I'm having some technical difficulties, so I can only hear part of the group, and then I refresh and I get another part of the group. So, I can. Uh, um, can I can you hear, hear you. Me? Okay. And I'm. I can hear you, Kristen. I can hear you, John. John, uh, should we wait? Wi-Fi. All right. You let us know but, when you're uh, ready. It would be about. Okay. Sounds minutes. good. Okay. All right, Kristen. Thank you. You're up. You're up. So, what has this plant taught you? I mean, you, you, you know. I... <laughs> well, it's been interesting. I um, I became familiar with cannabis way back in high school before moving to California, and um, grew up in a family where my grandparents had a really large produce farm. And so I spent a lot of time on the farm. And then my dad was a very avid gardener, but um, very conservative family and um, very Western medicine based. And my mom loved to wildcraft, kind of ironically, even though she worked for a doctor's office. And so I grew up feeling like there was a lot of separation between our well-being and nature and what nature could offer. I didn't 
really understand how to bridge that gap. And then I decided to study plant medicine, which is what brought me to California and to Southern Humboldt. Um, I moved here to go to Hartwood and study Chinese medicine. And over the course of that process, cannabis became more than, um, I guess, a, 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 largely an intoxicant. It became a, another tool in my toolkit of botanical medicine. Um, and that was a really amazing growth opportunity for me to learn about it as a food and an essential fatty acid with omegas and GLAs in it. And then to learn about the medicinal um, effects of the plant from moistening the intestines and the lungs to being a bronchial dilator and having all of these ways to work with it. And then coming to Humboldt was shocking. I had known about the war on drugs, but I had never really experienced it. I mean, I grew up in a very kind of upper middle class, I would say privileged household, and we were very insulated from that. And then landing here and experiencing camp, I was fully horrified. <laughs> you know, Hartwood is um, in the middle of the Emerald Triangle. It's right um, kind of in the corner where um, Humboldt meets Trinity and Mendocino. And there's a lot of cannabis cultivation and activity there. And I showed up in August, right? And here we have camp starting to go into full swing. And I had never, I didn't know what to think. You know, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> what year was that? Cabin. This was in 95. And so I'm walking back to my cabin and I've got a convoy of law enforcement passing me on the road and I'm choking and coughing dust and there's helicopters and machine guns mounted on the helicopters and I'm getting the evil eye and I can't even put it into perspective, right? Um, and then raising my, my daughter in that and my kids in that, the, the impacts of that, because that was farming too. And so having my little... 215, I was one of those first folks in Humboldt that sent a letter to the head of the drug enforcement unit with a map to my house because I was a patient. I'm supposed to be safe to have 10 plants. And man, that first summer I did that, um, I got flown about 50 times. I got a helicopter landed on my driveway with law enforcement pointing at me and I'm sitting at my house with my daughter in my arms. She is a couple years old. And I I had never, I mean, for me, it was horrifying. And then I, I, it, it kind of woke me up to what we were doing with demonizing plants and medicines because we don't understand them or potentially someone might abuse them. Um, and I got sparked into advocacy. I mean, I just, I was so, um, I would say pretty much dismayed by it and the terror in the community. Um, and at the same time, I think that same terror that we experienced in the community being militarized for a couple of months every year is also what built community unlike anything I had ever experienced. So the fact that neighbors were watching out for each other, the um, time that, you know, I sent the letter in and had the helicopter landed on my driveway, um, the neighbors renegated up to my property to make sure that my daughter and I were okay. I had never experience that much um, willingness to support each other. You know, I grew up in the suburbs. It was very anonymous in a lot of ways. You might know your neighbor, but you weren't like, holy cow, I got a water blowout. Can I get a three quarter inch coupler? <laughs> there wasn't a, hey, can we send someone to your house because there's raids happening and we were wrong person is there and one of the kids are okay. Can we get them out for you? Can we, you know, I, I, I had never been in a scenario where I knew there was a raid in someone's neighborhood, likely because all of the women and children from that area were in town, right? So for me, that was just a massive eye-opening experience about how we were really demonizing and terrorizing communities. And I can only imagine what that's been like for communities of color, right? Throughout the U.S. Here I am, I'm white girl shows up in Humboldt and I'm like, whoa, my gosh. But I imagine that that same terror has been felt 
wholeheartedly by more people than I can even imagine, right? And not just in the U.S., but throughout the world. And um, having a background in plant medicine, I don't understand how we can demonize these plants that bring so much, right? We have everything from food to fiber to medicine to spiritual opportunities with these plants. Um, and ultimately, all of that spurred me into advocacy. Um, and within that, I, I liked um, Casey's comment, as well as lots of other comments. I've had a hard time hearing all the speakers. Um, but Casey's comments about the civic lessons really rang true. I mean, I come from a background in Chinese medicine and herbology and acupressure. And so I didn't learn the legislative process except for like, you know, how to be a bill on Capitol Hill and remembering that song from Schoolhouse Rock. And now I'm largely reading public policy every day and working with local legislators and electives and regulators and state legislators and electives and um, knowing cannabis is a bioaccumulator. It, it's really taught me more about my product safety game, how to manage my farm in a healthy manner to ensure that the product that comes off the farm has the love and the intent and all of the goodness that it can hold and offer folks. And then how that is impacted all the way through the supply chain or potentially impacted and how we hold that product safety all the way through the supply chain. So, um, and within that patience, right, we're working in public policy, there's one thing watching a plant grow, but for me, that's like the, the break, you know, being able to go out every morning and sit in the field and talk to everyone, right? I tend to talk to plants and butterflies and everything out there that I experience in the morning and doing my check-in. But the patience that comes with trying to fix the policy issues and try to help make sure that our legacy farmers and our community can continue to engage in a legal manner. Um, that patience is pretty massive having to build that up. That is a slow, tedious process. And um, I have not been known for being the most patient person in the world. So I think that's been a really major lesson and compassion. I mean, when we're talking to folks who need this medicine, it's a little bit easier for me coming from a wellness background to hold compassion for those needs. But when we're standing next to and trying to have a conversation and break through opposition, people are triggered and a lot of times fearful about what cannabis might bring to their community or their home or their loved ones if they don't understand the plant. And Having to slow down and practice listening and holding compassion for that fear has been a really huge lesson for me as well that this plant has brought. So I think it's made me more patient, um, more consistent, and more compassionate. Um, and those are things that I'm hoping to try to continue to evolve or build on in my life. So I'm appreciative for the plant for bringing me more of that and helping me understand the needs and the necessity of those pieces. So, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you for, for talking about the drug war experience from your personal perspective, um, because that is a very real story that aligns with a lot of what our experience is up here. I can see you well. 
Yes, I'm in a I'm in a place. I'm going to turn off my air conditioning. I'm now in my car. Don't outside melt on of, us. What? Don't melt on us. I don't melt. There you go. I'm melting. Melting. <laughs> so I'm outside the local McDonald's stealing their Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is what I do. So it may not be the, the greatest nutritional part, and it turns out there's no cannabis in this McDonald's that I know of. So when I'm looking at this plant, um, I've only been involved in cannabis since uh, 2012. And at the time, I worked for a major corporation called Waters Corporation, which uh, made um, mass spectrometers and analytical testing that or the what's the government and mixture their quality quality because I thought that in 2012 the was the move or something you know, what's in the what's in the oil plants to know when a plant was ready so i felt that that was going to be um an opportunity for waters corporation to and in those early days i helped with the analytic labs uh, can labs for example in colorado um some of the other ones that were out there at the time there weren't that many and so my career has been a phd synthetic chemist that I thought I would teach college and then I I joined a you know Waters Corporation with 29 34 years of uh, of working with analytical equipment and through those years it's been a number of solvents but um I came to into this industry when it was young with California Colorado Washington and some of the birthing of those problems, but but I'm not a I'm not a creator. I'm an enhancer, and so at the time I I went out to really talk to uh, the users of extraction equipment and what they were doing with the plant and how they were growing it. That brought me to Redding, California, and to the reality of what um, cannabis was at the time, and so. I've been blindfolded and taken to you know different places, so I wouldn't know where they were. I've um, I've been able to now work closely with law enforcement on the other side of law enforcement. That's that's something I wasn't used to, and also being able to work through the process. Um, so today is um, today would have been my sister's seventy uh, second birthday. She would have been seventy two today but she died in 2002 at age 54 from epilepsy from a grand mall seizure she'd had them all her life and so i had done a lot of digging with ethan russo and looking through all the medical parts so my thought process within the entire um scope was how does this thing turn into a medicine how does it turn into a safe medicine how does it turn into something that's ethical economical and being able to provide, you know, good quality products for patients. And during that time, I, and then I retired in uh, 2017 and started my own company. And since that time, I've been able to, um, to figure out also how to lose uh, over uh, $250,000 because now I'm in debt. And, uh, and even though I'm now incredible debt, I'm still moving through every day, learning and understanding that part of this process and part of this drive is helping people with PTSD. Um, I'm helping people with, um, you know, uh, other ailments. And so that's, that's been my process. And, and the plant has now, it, it moves me towards something called pharmacognosy. And pharmacognosy is a natural medicine that, that products can use, use plants for medicine. And so for me, that's what I'm really focused on is to be able to provide a better product 
and um, the other one I do is I talk to anyone who's who's moving and can pop a mirror, whether it's in an elevator, a taxi, walking down the street. I'm in a store. I'm at a CVS. I will talk to anyone and ask them, them product, like what their experiences are for with, medicine with. With and cannabis and so CBD, that, uh, moving it towards that. Really so I just try and educate one person at a time, whether it's social not. equity or whether it's through the medicine and getting those biases passed out. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'll let you stick to it. What would you say is the biggest lesson that this plant has taught you? You can't stop stupid, but you can muffle it for a while with duct tape. Oh, shit. That's a grower's trick. <laughs> there are many people who have no idea about the plant. They have no idea, but they've only heard things from other sources. And then they will repeat those. So whether it's a social bias, whether it's a racial bias, whether it's a plant bias, they will move towards something that they've heard. And so for me, the biggest thing I've learned on the plant is that people need to be educated and they can be educated one at a time. Hmm. Thank you, thank you. So it looks like we lost AC for a bit, which is a bummer, but we'll just keep on rolling. So now we have time to kind of you know, um, have a group discussion. And really what I heard a lot of you talk about is that this plant has taught you patience. Uh, it's, it's helping you grow spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, in all different ways. Um, and I heard tolerance in there as well. And what I hear is those are all lessons that the world really needs right now, globally. Like these are teachings that we're seeing throughout that um, need to be supported in this conversation. Um, and I hope to see our plant get pushed out further. Does anyone have any any input before we take a break around what being teaching out that the um, world needs? No? All right. Well, if you guys want to, we're going to take I a five-minute Go ahead, Angela. John. Oh, Angela. Angela wants to talk. Thank you. She's, the plan has taught me a lot about love. That's mm. number one. Life. Peace. It's about beautiful people together, the community and culture and the compassion behind it. It builds community and we share our values and our knowledge. It's, it's about a quality of life. I, I see a, it gives a lot of people a quality of life that otherwise wouldn't be non-existent and, and people that are, that just want to be able to help our community. You know, it's not all about selling. A lot of it's giving and educating and teaching. She says, and growing. It really gives us a connection with nature and opens our eyes to nature and the possibilities and how beautiful it is. I feel at peace. And I found out how I <laughs> found out how my mom and dad met. I was asked about it, and like I, I heard the story before, but I had never heard the full story. And she said that um, her mother was at the park selling cannabis, and that's how she met her her dad. She was seventeen years old. I was asked <laughs> about it, and she says, like now I was, it's a really funny cool story, story before, but I never and, heard. You know, my, my parents met through cannabis and I'm a product of cannabis. So, you know, just the growing and the experience through that and how much it's affected our families and to be able to pass on those legacies. You know, she, she asked me, 
you know, I was watching this uh, documentary the other day. You know, there was um, a old paleontologist botanist, and they're talking about I the think okay. and how a majority of them they were showing pictures all had seven leaf and you know how we all have endocannabinoid systems so we all evolved from this plant it was a food source it was us i mean were we monkeys eating cannabis and now we have conscious thought and it's brought us together and it's made us more analytical i mean uh, one wow. thing it's taught me is in the cannabis industry, a lot of people have, they're ignorant because they think that we're stoners if we're growers and that we're lazy, but I've never met a lazy grower. I've never met a, a, a clueless grower. Like everyone's on this pursuit of knowledge and trying to understand it, whether you're looking into mycelium or just busting out your microscope to look at dirt or looking at the insects or planting flowers and building the ecosystem and just conscious thought everywhere you put a rock, you put thought into it. Like, what is it going to do? How is it going to look? Is it, what's it going to support? What type of nutrients is it going to be feeding it? Like just so much into it. And it's all about life and communities. I mean, even the soil has communities, uh, if it teaches us anything, it teaches us everything. Like it's really opened our eyes. Uh, I, if you would have asked me, could could you make a one world language? I, no, but now working with our deaf community and seeing the need for this language and cannabis and understanding, well, yeah, it makes the impossible possible with conscious thought and it's it's beautiful mm. and how many people did you impact with that i mean five percent of the world's deaf 15 is hard of hearing that's 20 percent of the world that's a huge impact that we as a cannabis industry can have together by educating through the development of sign language like if i could give the world Jared, one that thing <laughs> That was beautiful. It makes the impossible possible with conscious thought. That was one of my most favorite statements I've heard in a long time. We we had AC on. We just lost her. I guess I'll 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 give my my what it's taught me most. And see if she hasn't popped back on by then. Um, you know the plant has taught me fearlessness, I think the most. I, I was a very traumatized, victimized young woman, product of the drug war. Um, and this plant, in, in adulthood, I didn't use the plant as, as a young person. I didn't like the plant. I didn't like the experience because I was very embedded in the drug war. But when I actually started using the plant as medicine, when I got injured, it really taught me to be fearless and that gave me lots of things it taught me to understand myself it taught me to appreciate and value myself many of the things that lisandro had mentioned um it helped me grow it helps me grow um i don't know if it gives me patience because it really ignites me too it empowers me um so patience isn't the right word for what the plant does for me but it does give me the opportunity to stop and hold space and appreciate what's going on around me um i i do have great reverence and appreciation for this plant um and see it as a, as a beautiful education tool uh, in lots of aspects. So shucks, I'm bummed we don't have AC. Any last word from anybody before we step away from this conversation and take a quick break and come back on? Just just real quick, I, one of the things that just occurred yes. to me as you were talking about this, um, if if you said, hey, let's get a let's get a panel discussion together for Comfrey. Like, I, I mean, I love Comfrey. Comfrey's my friend. But I don't know that we'd get 
a whole panel discussion together to, to talk about and so there's you know the, there's something about this plant that like you know it, it's been a thread we've touched on a lot how much it draws people together and, and that's something I think that, that, mm. that we all really treasure and john had something to say too John? I think it, um, it, what I've seen is it's brought the young scientists together and brought a realization of, of uh, pharmacognosy. So I go back to that, or, or ethnobotany. And it has also brought the young minds from chemical engineering and minds from uh, botany bringing them together to show how they can maximize a plant for different contributions, but also how to leave the plant alone and let it provide the ingredients. So for example, as Andro's a young person and I'm very old and there's people older than me that are making big contributions to how do you, how do you concentrate the components of the plant to be able to provide a specific um, attribute. And those attributes can also be seen in other plants also, so mixture. And whether it's gonna be the counter at CVS and Walgreens, Walmart, Costco, I don't care. Or whether it's going to be behind the counter for you know small pharmaceuticals or other specific things, but that's, that's where it's going to come. It's it's going to bring a real appreciation of, of, of black cohosh and uh, nexasia and everything else that's out there. everyone thank you for our quick break and and now we're back uh we do have ac braddock so we're just gonna kind of keep flowing and um here you know we we, we want to keep talking a little bit about what the plant is teaching us and and now that we've got a great picture of ac uh we'd like i'd love to know you know ac you have been working with this plant for a while um, and a lot of other plants, but what has this experience with cannabis really taught you most? Wow. <laughs> it has taught me so much. It's, um, but I, I think more than anything from my own personal experience from being a, a young teenager um, imbibing all the way through today, I think the most important thing that it teaches is an access to a universal mind, mm. um, like with many plants and many plant medicines. And that, you know, cause I'm a, I'm an introvert and um, having that headspace as a young person and, and still today to utilize that, to look deeper into myself and then connect to the rest of the world and the universe it, itself. I mean, the plants, people, you know, everything. And to have, and I think that's one of the things that is really helping me right now because this is such a, a hard time and it's so universally, uh, just the vibes of it, you can feel the changes and the chaos and the turmoil and to be able to think of things in a more universal way um, helps me a lot. Um, 
takes me out of my own worries and uh, helps me to look at this from a macro perspective of how we're going to come out of it all uh, and the silver linings that are there and the, the chaos and the, ch the, the change that happens from chaos. It ha and it has taught me that politically, I have a voice and I can make a difference because everybody who gets involved, who has especially been involved since, you know, um, medical legalization really started happening and they go in front of your legislators and you have a local active um, participation, you do make a difference. And I think a lot of people in this country right now feel like they don't make a difference, their, that their voice doesn't matter at all. And that this cannabis has taught me that that is not true. I, I do have an influence. And it has taught me about social equity. Um, I, you know, I didn't know um, until I really started getting in, involved about, you know, the, de the details of the history, the details of prohibition, the details of the Nixon administration and the Reagan administration and the Clinton administration and uh, how this affected communities of color, how this affected the women's movement, you know, how this affected discrimination and again, politics, because this industry and its challenges are all political. Mm -hmm. um, so it has given me a voice uh, for that because I'm, I'm a humanitarian. It is, I was, I, I just stopped being the um, chair of NCIA. Um, it gave me a platform and with the company that with Eden, I have a, a platform. I can, I can speak to this and I, and I speak to this for, I don't know, the last several years, I stopped talking about extraction so much and I started talking more about social equity and how we got here and why we're here and how do we get out of it and the science and the, the whole medical aspect of this plant um, with our endocannabinoid system and the genetics of the plant and the genetics of the extraction process and product development and then how that applies to people is all one thing and it's not true for just cannabis it's true for all plants and where we're starting to remember be reintroduced to things that humans knew intuitively where you could walk by and see a different shades of a color of a berry and you knew that berry for that shade of color it was poisonous and this one wasn't we've lost so much and the science of where all this is going is going to change our medical system it's going to change our our social equity it's going to change um how businesses work because most of the businesses that um, i know are, are mission driven it's important to them and um, they talk about the science they do they spend time to do the education to the consumer because a lot of consumers aren't aware of the massive amount of benefits to this plan on every level and um and the people mm. um, the people that i have met just intelligent open-hearted open-minded down to earth um and the women i mean wow the women in this industry are just amazing i have I, you know i was <laughs> before i got into cannabis most of my friends were men and I got into cannabis and there was like all these super intelligent, feisty, down to earth women who loved to have a good time. It worked hard. And I was like, where were you all of my life <laughs> until this industry? And it really started booming to have more women in it about 2013, 2014. And that's just been a godsend to me as a CEO and as just as a human being too. So it's, uh, it's a beautiful plant. She's, she's a wonder. <clears throat> Layla, I can't hear you. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, we're all so blessed to be being brought together by her. And, 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 and that part of it is so needed right now. You know, our world is a di divisive place. We have divisive leadership. 
um, the community that I come from and some of us come from it is was very isolated. So we, you know, and we're, and we're very myopic in a lot of ways with all our diverse ideals. Um, and right now we have a very large community that is impacted, has been impacted like my community by this plant that's fighting for their equality. Um, we also have, as you mentioned, AC women, you know, women from this community are really strong and, 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 and have held the glue to help hold these communities together and actually the ones that brought the plant out to the patients much of the time back in the days. Um, you know, the farmers, we've got farmers here. We have hundreds, thousands actually, of black market farmers that are totally disenfranchised with the system, but we need for the system to work. It's the most complex and contentious prohibition issue in the last century. The legal wars continue to rage on, battle lines being erased and redrawn. The march toward legalization of marijuana is underway, while opponents are strengthening their resolve. But it's about more than legalization. It struggles with regulation standardization, and the impact that this $20 billion industry will have on all of us. The voices on all sides are many, clouding the issues and twisting the truth to aid their cause. We go deep and get to the facts, presenting an agenda-free look at the issues facing our nation. Every day, a new development. Every hour, a new story. Every minute, history in the making. News, interviews, education. We are TNM News.